Welcome back. It's to Plus Politics. The Nigerian political atmosphere has been said to be filled with issues stemming from tribalism, corruption, Godfatherism, religious fanaticism, and more. These issues have cursed the country problems time after time, slowing down or outrightly stopping development in the country. The question now is whose responsibility is it to fix politics in Nigeria? And what exactly can they do? Joining us to discuss this is the Director General of Nigerian First Project, Ezekiel Inya Etok. Good evening, sir. My pleasure to be with you. Yes, uh, I, 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 I follow the, the conversation today, the fixed politics, which I understand that uh, it's, you are one of the drivers. I, I know that uh, the former minister is the chief driver. That's talking about Obi Ezekwisili. And quite a whole lot of things happen. But part of the take home for me, which I would like you to uh, dwell more on, is how do we connect the larger population, which probably are not elitist in nature, because the conversation seems to be a whole lot of informed people. How do we get this conversation to the street? Okay, um, thanks for having me, and thanks for highlighting the fact that this um, fixed politics came as an initiative, um, Dr. Obi Ezekwesili. She had a fellowship in um, one of the very reputable institutions in Berlin, and um, came up with this. From the study, she came across um, what she would call the political triangle that had the regulators at the one end, the citizens on the other, at the bottom um, right, and then the, the political class and the parties and everything at the bottom left. Now, what we did today was to bring that study into life, to give life to that study. And I was so amazed at um, the reception of Nigerians um, generally. It's like men and women of conscience, well-meaning Nigerians, who are eager to see a change in our political system. Because the basic, um, the meat of the study was to highlight the nexus between you know, politics and the development of the economic progress of nations. And it was such a serious um, study. And from what we have today and what was put forward today by the team, by the different people that worked you know, night and day, I think that every Nigerian that was available realized that this was good to be. Then coming to your specific question, we always talk about the rural dweller, the man in the village, very important, very important. But do you know that we, the elites, you'll be amazed to know to what extent we are actually ignorant of political processes. And we run what we call the concept of elitism in Nigeria. What that means is that the people in my village are saying, what is Nyaitok saying? Hmm. Do you understand? They depend on us, the elites. So when you empower the elites, with the right information, and they get motivated, and they see the lectures between politics and the progress or the economies of nation, then out of personal interest, they will now be able to communicate this. And what fixed politics has done is, because I know that time is so little, is to go beyond rhetoric and set up certain institutions. And one of such institutions is a school of some sort where they are able to train with a certain capacity of about 500 minimum every six months. These are people who are going to be like trained, the trainers who are going to go like a pyramid down the line. And the structure is going to be formed right to the grassroots where people are going to be informed and enlightened with relevant information. Okay. Uh, um, one other things I noticed about uh, the, some of the speakers, the panelists is... Um, uh, I've seen some of them participated in elections before, including you. Uh, I've seen a, a whole lot of stuff they have to offer, but that's one of the reasons why I'm asking that question. The people you are yeah. reaching out to, the people you believe you want to represent, seem not to be on the same page with you. They, they, they will ask you questions like, what are you bringing? What do you have in your pocket? Yeah. And there is always yeah. that disconnect. And I see a whole lot yeah. of uh, conversation around, are we not heading towards another, 
you know, fruitile effort. Uh, no, 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 not at all. Far from it. As a, re I, I, as a matter of fact, we had one of the best blends today because we had people who are in the academia, we had people who are activists, and we have people who have been on the field, like you say, people like myself, who have been on the field. We even had regulators, like the man that is on screen, right, that was not long ago, that's a Professor Jega. We had people who have been like the former president of, um, of Brazil, and then we have, you know, former uh, first lady, uh, not first lady, first. we had people that practitioners, we had a very, very wide spectrum of people who brought their, 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 their experiences to bear. People like myself and others who have contested, including Madame Obi herself, brought in the fact that there is a weaponization of poverty. And that we have this, the, the voters, actually the grassroots. Now we are setting up a template that is like top to bottom, you know, what must definitely trickle down, but let it let informed knowledge trickle down. And you know, we realize that. <laughs> A man collects just what he can get for today because he knows that that's all that we get to him. But when you go and let the person know and be able to instill confidence on the person that this is why you are poor and you are going to keep remaining poor. And then we're not doing this a few days to election, but a few years to election. We have over two years to election and we take up this um, advocacy with the, with the vigor that we are you know, taking up right now, I want to tell you that in less than six months, now, you know, so many things are coming together in an amazing way. This is coming at the very same time when we've never had this level of activation of the youth of this country. And did you realize that when the NSAS, you know, protests came on board, it was not only the elitists, Right down here in Uyo, I was part of the one in Lagos. I was there at the toll gate. I was there at the Lausa, And I was here in Uyo. And I saw with my eyes how pure water sellers were starting to give their pure water free because they saw hope. Like, you know, Winston Churchill says that hope is the anchor that stabilizes the soul. All of a sudden, the poor man is starting to see hope. I'm starting to believe that something could come that would be different. If Nigerians can go on the street without being harassed or coerced or, you know, and then they don't depend on, like in Uyo, I'm one of the big boys in quotes, but I did not give them a dime. I did not give them a dime. They were taxing themselves and collecting 100 naira, 50 naira. It shows me that something has started. And when fixed politics comes in, to give them an enlightened perspective, I can assure you that 2023 is going to be a completely different ball game. Okay, so, I, I think I like that. But another issue I would like to bring to your attention, because I see you as one of the yeah. panelists too, um, uh, uh, rising from that uh, protest, uh, if I, when you were saying that you were one of the people there, I was like, why is your name not included in the, in the suit of people who promoted <laughs> the answer? But that's, no, they, that's, that's they just... They checked my bank account. They didn't see anything inside okay. the selling okay. that guy. Okay, that's just, that's just a joke anyway. But let's look at um, another issue one of the panelists mentioned. That's uh, Tunde Bakari. It did call for generational integration and not necessarily generational shift, which the younger people seem to be pushing. Now, how do you convince the new generation that they still need these elders in those boats to fix the politics? Awesome question. You know, I contested in 2029, 1929, I said 2029, 19, 2019, God have mercy on me. <laughs> and I contested on two hashtags. One of them was social governance. The second was responsibility transfer to the youth. We didn't have to wait for the youth to say, we want. I saw it coming long before today. On the other hand, we are working with the youth. There's a nexus, there's a relationship, but 
We are not stopping the youth because that energy that they are bringing on the table, don't be in a hurry to stop them. No, don't be in a hurry to stop them. Let them get it into their DNA. Let it become part of them. Gradually, they are going to go from heart to head. It is a, it's a, it's a natural transition. Now it's a heart game and the adrenaline is pumping and everything. But very soon, there's going to be a transition from the heart to the head when you start to enlighten them. At that time, they themselves will start to sift and look for the elders they can trust, they can believe in. There's been too much betrayal right now. Don't come and start to tell the youth, oh, no, no, don't do this. No, no, leave them alone. Allow them with time. They themselves, look, I sit there in my office watching them. They came to me. I didn't go to them because they know who we are. They know, they know who is who in Nigeria. They know the politicians that use them and they know the elders that mean well. So gradually, like um, uh, Pastor Tunde Bakare said, I agree with him, which agrees with what I call responsibility transfer to the youth. The time has come when we, the elders, have to know that if we don't give, they will take. So wisdom demands that we call them ourselves and say, you've got to take over, you've got to take over. You, we put them on the defensive and, you know, start to drill them honestly and sincerely and give them, we have a lot of young youths that are vibrant and doing well. We must identify those ones, give the responsibilities and be ready to transfer this responsibility to them going forward. Okay. Let, let me quickly look at one of those uh, uh, take-homes uh, that I like from that conversation. I'm quoting one of the young uh, persons that spoke, talking about uh, the, the executive director of Iaga Africa. That's something he told you. He did he say that yeah. we need that INEC needs financial independence. He mentioned the issue of electronic transmission, electronic voting. And quickly, just to look at uh, the American election, we are talking about about 80% participation. That's huge. That's the biggest ever in American elections. So um, what we have now shows that we are running between 35 to 40% participation. So people will say that a good number of people have been apathy, probably the youth. So do you think that the way forward in fixing this politics is how do we fix the electoral system beyond these views that uh, Samson Itodo as recommended. Let me say this, and I say this with every sense of responsibility. Making things work is not in the interest of the legislators. Again, I repeat, I'm saying this with every sense of responsibility. Because if you want to ask how things can be done properly, a good number of them will not fit the bill. When you talk of the three C's, Competence, character, capability, or capacity. Look at our national lead assembly. Look at our leadership. What drives them there is, you know, that's what they can get from it. And politics, governance about service, giving to the people. And this is not what these people are in for. So they are not going to be in a hurry to bring a system that will throw up the best. But I want to tell them this in their own interest, they should not allow hashtag to get into National Assembly of give us a constitutional, you know, um, uh, not constitutional, um, the review of our electoral process. Yeah. Okay? They should not wait because that hashtag is inevitable. The youth are ready. I've seen them. And wisdom, you know, the Bible talks about the sons of Issachar, who can discern the signs of the times. Hmm. Our National Assembly should see it coming. They should be the nice guy. You mean, I mean, imagine a guy that is going to take it, so something from you with a slap, and he's approaching you, and you're like, oh, my guy, would you like to have this? You know what he does? He takes us, oh, thank you. Do you understand me? Hmm. He says, oh, thank you. I mean, in his heart, he says, ah, I wish this guy had tried me. So let our National Assembly members not take the young people for granted. Let Mr. President become the grandfather of the new Nigeria, wow. whom the youth will say, wow, this man exists in a place of glory. And if let him, this you know, I wish I was one of his advisors. The biggest thing he can do now is to start to 
play with his children and grandchildren and say, look, I'm not going to come back here. You better come here. Let it be the one threatening the young people. You better come here. Come and collect this thing. We are tired. <laughs> you don't want this response to transfer. That is the wisest thing to do. to do now. If not so, the young people will chase you out. And they don't need to wait for that. Okay. Oh, Ezekiel, in your yeah, talk, uh, it's always a pleasure to have you. Trust me, if we even have one her, it won't be enough. Thank you for your intervention. Thank you for your insight. And let's the conversation continues. Let it not just be today. Let's fix politics. By then, we can actually have that new Nigeria you always talk about. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. Thank you, too. Yes, we'll take a very short breather. And when we come back, it will be time for my take. Please don't go anywhere. <music> 2020 has not yet come to an end. And the drums of 2023 elections are already beating. Politicians have begun to make moves, agreements, and deals towards the future election. I will acknowledge that it is good to plan for the future, but not at the detriment of the present. Nigeria is currently nearing a level where it can be referred to as a failed state or a failing state. Now, more than ever before, we need our leaders to steer us in the right direction, to the place our heroes dreamt up for us many years ago. Dear leaders, your re-election or winning of political offices will only be satisfied by what you bring to the table today. I mean, today. The Nigerian electorate is now wide awake and is intent on flushing out bad leadership. Just, to, just today, the side you will always be on the day the 2023 election results are announced. The winning working side or the losing bad governance side. And that's my take for today. Thank you for staying with us. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, same time. I remain your host, Coyote Ladeinde, saying bye for now.